Welcome to the Problem Solving Series. It's my great pleasure to introduce to you a guest presenter from Camelson College, Richard Zahofsky. He has been a professor in physics for 15 years and has been involved in academic skills counseling for 23. He is also the co-author of a book on study skills, Learning for Success. I hope you enjoy the series. Many students find mathematical problem solving courses like physics, calculus, statistics, chemistry to be difficult. Indeed, they're often called the killer courses. But why are these courses so difficult? They actually have learning demands that are different from those of other courses. While memory does play a role in problem solving courses, the key to success is really about applying a concept to a new situation. In other words, a problem. For many students, this is more difficult than understanding a verbal theory in psychology or, say, a diagram of a mechanism in biology. On top of this application difficulty, problem-solving courses also involve a different language, that is, mathematics. Furthermore, these courses are sequential, so to correctly solve problems in a new concept today often requires that you know how to apply previous concepts that may have been covered long ago. You could visualize this as a set of building blocks. Today's concept is actually built on the previous concepts from long ago. If one of those concepts is missing, the whole structure falls down. To cope with these unique learning demands, you need special strategies for problem-solving courses. Here are strategies for handling the problem-solving environment that you work with. These would be the time and the resources that you have in your problem-solving courses. The first strategy is to use frequent short study sessions. Learning in a problem-solving course is similar to learning to swim or play the piano. You can't cram. The learning needs to be done in frequent but short study sessions. A good guideline is to use at least three to five sessions a week with a duration of about one to two hours per session. So if you are taking a calculus or statistics course, you might set aside one or two hour study sessions on say Monday and Thursday night with another two hour session on Saturday afternoon. And remember, you need to do this for each problem solving course you are taking. The second strategy is to focus on solving problems when you study. One of the main paths to failure in problem solving courses is to spend too much time reading over your textbook or looking at your lecture notes, especially when you don't understand a concept. I used to do that. I used to read my calculus text just because I wanted to avoid solving the calculus problems that I found just that little bit too difficult. While you do need to spend a bit of time reviewing your notes and using the textbook, most of your study time has to be spent on actually solving the kinds of problems that show up on your tests and assignments. Also, make sure you do a variety of problems. Almost all textbooks have exercise problems at the back of each section or the end of the chapter that go from easy to hard. You do need a course to do some of the easy problems, but make sure you get into doing those medium and even some of the harder problems. Those are the kind that show up on the tests. Now what do you do if you just don't understand those problems? You can't get them. You're stuck. This is where the third strategy comes in. Get help promptly. Don't leave it to the last minute. Remember, you can't cram for problem-solving courses. Problem-solving courses in university and college tend to be quite demanding. There will almost certainly be concepts and problems that you just don't get, you don't understand. That's okay. But what's not okay is to do what I used to do, is to hope that those problems will just disappear. They won't show up on the test or that they won't matter. It may work in other courses, but it won't work in problem-solving courses. They move fast and are sequential, so if you don't get help quickly, you will be in real trouble come exam time. And remember, too, that no one will just come and give you help. You have to search it out. You have to find the help sources that will work for you. So here are some help sources you could consider using. Your professor. Surprisingly, many students don't use this obvious resource. Check your professor's office location and hours. These will be listed on your course outline. Another resource is fellow students, especially the ones who are doing well and don't mind helping you. 
And you might want to consider ways you could help them out too. Help centers is a third resource you could consider. Again, you need to check the location and hours. And then resource books, like the solution manual that accompanies your text, or generic books at the bookstore. Two warnings about using these books. One, make sure the book fits the course level you're at. Some of the books are too low, some are too high. And second, make sure that you've attempted the problems first. Never just copy out solutions. Five, and finally, internet resources. It would be useful to bookmark some good ones early in the semester. Once things get busy, you won't have much time to search. And one last point about getting help. Try to ask a specific question, even if it is something like, I'm not sure how you got that equation from that diagram or that example. As a physics instructor, I found it very difficult when students would just come to me and say, I don't understand anything at all. There was no place for me to start. These are the strategies for managing the resources you have as a problem solver. The next two videos in the problem solving series talk about how you can organize the mental information and the problem solving activities and thoughts that you have to do to get through those problem solving courses.